Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Hello and welcome to the Friday broadcast. You made it to Friday again. Congratulations. I hope your week has been spent not only fulfilling your earthly responsibilities and duties, but also your spiritual ones. I hope you've made time to spend with God each and every day and as well with other saints. And then hopefully you and I have been spending time with those who do not yet know Christ as Savior. I'm going to say more about that in just a minute, how you and I can reach out to those who are yet unbelievers and give them the gospel of Jesus Christ. But right now, though, my Bible is sitting open to the book of Hebrews chapter 3. Hebrews chapter 3. I'm going to begin to read there in a moment, but before I do, I want to get into our Bible study this way. What is your job. What is your job as an individual believer? I've been asking that the question this week. Do you know what your job is? Frankly, honestly, there's a number of answers that to that question that would be correct. We could give answers like learning to love God. That's my responsibility. Or learning to love the saints or growing in Christ's likeness and and learning to share the gospel. All of these are correct and good answers, but none of them is complete in and of itself. Here in Hebrews chapter 3, we're going to look at eight verses that highlight five jobs each believer is to be doing. Now, part of standing before God one day and hearing him say, well done, thou good and faithful servant, enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Part of that is for you and I to be fulfilling these five tasks. Now, so far, In our look at Hebrews chapter 3, we have looked at the job of two builders in the opening six verses, and then the job of God's Bible in verses 7 through 11. Today, we're going to look at the job of God's believers, and then the job of this individual believer, you and me. That'll be the focus here of verses 12 through 19. So get your Bible open, if at all possible, get something to write with and write on, and let's, number one, commit ourselves to do the jobs God has for us, and then, number two, discover just what those jobs are. Let's begin the study prepared to do what God shows us. Well, before I go any farther. I mentioned about sharing the gospel with lost people. Bible Tract Echoes is the radio arm of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Now, remember, I'm talking about a gospel track. That's a short written presentation telling a person why they need a Savior from sin, who that Savior is, and how they can receive him. Now, at the end of the broadcast, my announcer is going to tell you how to get from us a complete sample packet of our gospel tracks. But right now, I want to tell you about one of those tracks. It's entitled, The Tragedy of a Wasted Life. God is concerned about our days, our moments, isn't he? We are to redeem the time because the days are evil. People are not only wasting time day by day, but they're wasting their life. How can we do that? That's the, exactly the story behind this gospel track. Now, what this gospel track does, it speaks not only to the lost people, it speaks to saved people as well. It begins by quoting here Romans 12, 1 and 2, which says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body as a living sacrifice. You know the verse. It talks about how people can waste time, waste talents, and waste their treasure. Dear friend, this is a good confronting gospel tract, good for young people to read, good for adults to read, people who do know Christ as Savior, not only will it challenge the believer, but it will clearly present the gospel to the lost. The tragedy of a wasted life, just one of the tracks in that sample packet that my announcer will tell you about at the end of the broadcast. Please be ready for that, won't you? 
Come with me now. Hebrews chapter 3. Let me begin reading at verse 12. It says this. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily, while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. I'm jumping to verse 16. For some, when they had heard, did provoke, howbeit not all that came out of Egypt by Moses, but with whom was he that is God grieved forty years? Was it not with them? them that had sinned, whose carcasses fell in the wilderness, and to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that believed not. So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. Now, what is laid out here in verses 12 to 19 was spoken to the entire set of believers in the group that first received this book called Hebrews. Yet, while all were to learn from it, it would require that each individual saint put the things into practice. For my purposes to walk through verses 12 through 19, I'm going to use five statements, all beginning with the word B, and then adding to that a word beginning with the letter A. For instance, the first one is this, be alert, be alert. Look at verse 12. It begins with these words, take heed. That means be alert. Job number one for us is to be alert. We are to be alert to discover if any of the folk within our fellowship of the saints is developing a heart of unbelief. And then getting to know people, if anybody among our fellowship is striving to or leaning towards departing from walking with God, the God who gave them eternal life. If one in our local church shows signs of not walking close to God and not wanting to stay firm in their Christian life, then we are to help them. This is a function of believers, and it's one of the reasons you and I need to be part of a good gospel-preaching local church. That's job number one, be alert. Job number two, be alongside. Be alongside. Verse. This is based upon verse 13. Coming alongside a struggling child of God would be the very natural thing to do if we saw a believer, a fellow saint, developing a heart that was departing from walking with Christ. The word exhort there in verse 13 translates a Greek word which literally means to come alongside. Now, honestly, we need to be getting better. You and I who know Christ, we need to be getting better at doing this in our local churches. Job number three, be attentive. Be attentive based upon verses 15 and 16. As individual saints, we need to be attentive to the voice of God. We need to develop the discipline of letting God's word be heard in our lives each and every day. Now, friend, we don't need to be reading the scriptures just to know the facts of the Bible to do some good job on some Bible quiz. It's good for us to know the facts of the Bible, and it's good for us to be able to call them when we take a Bible quiz. But we need to be reading the Bible with this goal in mind. Father, As I read your word today, I want it to change me. Tell me, show me what I need to do to implement this passage in my life today that I can be more like Christ. We need to be reading the Bible with that intent. Be attentive to the word, not just the facts, but what does God want me to change in my life, implement in my life? Job number four is be abstaining. Be abstaining based upon verse 16. Now, as you read through the verses here in chapter three, the word provoke and provocation is used three times. It's used in verse eight, it's used in verse 15, and in verse 16. Now, the literal word meaning of the word here, the Greek word means besides bitterness or beyond bitterness. It means that the Jews in the Old Testament, in their 40 years wandering, had done some things that caused God's heart to become bitter towards them. Now, please understand, when you and I think of bitterness, it's called the sin in the Word of God, but stirring up a heart that turns somebody against you, that's a bad thing. 
it's possible for God's people to do that. The Jews in the wilderness stirred this up by not listening to God's word as it was given through Moses. You and I can do the very same thing by not listening to God's word as he's given it to us through his son. That's how the book of Hebrews begins. God has spoken through his son. It continues that very point here in chapter three. Now, remind me again, just what did Jesus say you and I would do if we loved him? Oh, oh, that's right. We would keep his suggestions. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. No, no, no. That's not quite right, is it? It's not the word suggestions. Oh, I remember. It's commandments. If we love him, we will keep his commandments. Oh, dear brother and sister in Christ, we both need to be praying that we would love God in word and in deed and do not push God to become bitter at us. Fifth job is this, be advised, based upon verse 19. Be advised. If you can, look at verse 19. Notice the first three words. They are these, so we see. These words tell us that a conclusion is being made, a a culminating point is about to be stated. And just what was this overarching point of verse 3? Well, listen to verse 19, it says, So we see that they could not enter in, enter into rest, because of unbelief. Now, friend, if you get nothing else out of today's study, if you remember nothing else at all, please remember the next two statements I'm going to make. Are you ready? Here we go. Number one. Saving faith secures redemption. I'll say that again. Saving faith secures redemption. That's what John 3.16 is all about. Statement number two, walking by faith secures rest. That's what Hebrews 3 is about. Walking by faith secures rest. And by the word rest here, I mean the blessing of God, the blessing of that abundant life that Jesus came to give. How come so many people who honestly do know Christ as Savior are not experiencing abundant life? Because they're not walking by faith. As I see it, friend, you and I are presently in need of either statement one or statement two. Either we need to go to Christ by faith and receive his redemption, his salvation from the penalty of our own personal sins, or we need to go to Christ in faith and ask for his grace to walk today in a life pattern that that believes his word. We need to walk in acting his truth. Which is it you need today? Now, friend, I have already come to Christ by faith and received his son. I've come to Christ and received him as my savior from sin. I did that when I was seven. All my sin debt has been totally eradicated from my ledger before God. God has declared me righteous in his sight through the shed blood of Christ. Today, I had to come to God and say, God, help me to live out by faith the principles and truth of your word. Let me be like Christ, even though your word goes against the human thought patterns of how to live life by the world says, I'm going to live your way to honor you. I'm going to believe you. Let's be doing that. Dear friend, come to Christ or live by faith. Where are you today? Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309 828 6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website, Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.